Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. It is Friday the 13th. Happy Friday the 13th to all of my superstitious folks or my scary movie fans especially out there as we rock into Friday the 13th together. And if you've been keeping up with my updates, today is also pivotal in the sense we were thinking right around Friday the 13th we would start to get a far more promising signal of some possible tropical action out across the Atlantic Basin. And well, you know, sometimes I told you so just doesn't quite say it to throw a little iRobot movie reference in there. But anyways, thank you all so much for tuning in to the Weather Center this afternoon, folks. Happy Friday to everybody out there. If you are brand new to the channel and want consistent, accurate, and reliable tropical weather outlooks, you've come to the right spot. Please consider kindly hitting that subscribe button, sharing this information, giving that like button a little nudge as always. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. We've got a lot to talk about today, and we're going to try to blast through as quick as we can for the sake of time. Here is the Eastern Pacific. Delilah has officially hit the board right there. You can see it has formed up to the south of Mexico. Here's the latest advisory on this newly named tropical storm. Max sustained winds at 40 miles an hour, central pressure of 1,004 millibars, moving in that staple north-northwest direction at approximately 10 miles an hour. But let me change the color of the ink. It's actually this guy right there, this blip our infamous yellow blip just upstream of Delilah that we're going to be paying close attention to. National Hurricane Center gave this a little nudge as of 11 o'clock. You can see our seven-day chances are now up to 30%. The reason I want to say this is the interesting one is because if you notice, the formation zone is kinking up towards the north just a little bit, and I'll show you exactly why that is. But first, let's go outside to the full disk satellite shot. Delilah is an enormous tropical cyclone. If you look, it stands out front and center on this infrared shot. It is a massive area of low pressure, and it's actually pretty impressive to watch on the true color visible shot. I have that coming up next, exactly how this thing finally got its act together. We started out with a very slow counterclockwise spin, and you can notice that the kind of internal velocity, if you will, just started to get faster and faster over time until we finally got the depth to bring on a named storm and we're starting to see that mid and low level circulation alignment that they look for in tropical cyclones and beautiful convection with it as well. You look at the infrared, definitely a symmetrical system, not a whole lot of shear going on with it. it is right underneath an area of anti-cyclonic spin high up in the atmosphere so we have good outflow on it. Likely why it is, it is such a large system. Then if you notice, the gyre is in full effect. We've got a bit of a blend going on. The gyre is still rocking and rolling through Central America, the northwest corner of South America. But we also have some embedded tropical waves that are drifting through the pattern. It looks like there could be one right in through there. I'm not going to assume. I have not looked at the latest Ocean Prediction Center surface analysis, but it does look like that is a feature working its way through Nicaragua and Honduras, really upping their rain chances. Then you can see we have a large comma feature up over the central United States. That's also what we're watching to disrupt the pattern over the western Gulf ever so slightly and allow something maybe to lift a little further to the north. But let me go ahead and get my face out of the way so we can take full advantage and admire this true color satellite shot. So right out of the rip, one thing I want to point out too is look at this leftover spin right there in the top left portion of the screen. That was actually what was left of Cosme still wrapping around getting picked up by what is now Tropical Storm Delilah. Notice early on in the loop, it was a far more slower rotation, very broad. The convection was very scattered around. But notice how throughout the day today, now those thunderstorms have really found themselves over open water. We've cleared a little bit of Mexico out, and we're starting to cram this feature together, and it is getting that, quote, look. Very impressive band of inflow right along the southwest and southerly flank that you can kind of see embedded underneath the upper-level cirrus that's really blowing off from the outflow of this storm. So honestly, a marvelous tropical cyclone. It's so much fun to watch the evolution of these features. And the reason I also say it is such a marvelous tropical feature is because of the fact it is not expected to really impact anybody. Yes, we do have tropical storm warnings right up against the immediate Mexico coastline, but that's because of how broad this feature is. Look at the wind field on it. it extends out in all directions pretty symmetrically as well. So this is a pretty decent tropical storm. Not forecast to make her 
hurricane strength, though, I think it's just a little too big for its own good. It will take some time for it to really consolidate and spin up to hurricane intensity, and it's just not going to have that much time. If you notice, it's moving at a fairly decent click. By Sunday, it will already be wandering out of those favorable conditions in terms of not only the upper atmosphere, but the warmest waters down at ground level, especially since we have seen just a bit of marginal upwelling from previous tropical storms and Hurricane Barbara that traversed pretty much the exact same area. Okay, so we've got Delilah out of the way. Now let's talk. Let's talk. As mentioned previously, pardon my itch, we have been talking June 5th to about the 15th, the 4th through the 15th, and Friday the 13th was when I thought we would get a more robust signal, and it is happening. It's definitely happening. We're not quite there yet to where National Hurricane Center is going to pinpoint anything. I kind of give them until Sunday. I'm thinking maybe if these trends continue in the ensembles and our operational models, they may bite the bait and go for it and give us the textbook 0 for 20, or maybe take that formation zone that's in the Eastern Pacific and work its way up into the Bay of Campeche. We'll see. These are our latest ensembles from the Euro this afternoon. If you fast forward to Thursday in the morning, this is 8 a.m. Thursday. Notice we have a really good signal for tropical depression formation just to the south of southern Mexico, just to the immediate west of El Salvador there. You go to 168 hours into Friday morning and then finally Saturday morning, and we're really starting to see that signal lifting up into the Bay of Campeche where we're sitting at about a happy medium of 50-55% chance there could be something tropical trying to make its way over Central America, over Mexico, and into the hottest waters of the Gulf, minus the loop current. We do have our warmest waters nestled in to the Bay of Campeche coastlines there of Mexico, the Yucatan Peninsula. And so I really do think we have a decent shot at trying to squeak out another version of Tropical Storm Alberto or even Tropical Storm Chris from last hurricane season where it was a very short-lived tropical cyclone. We more or less just checked the box and kept on going. This one would be called Andrea, as we all know. You can also see we've seen a fairly steady uptick in our European spaghetti plots here. I'll go ahead and take my face out so we can zoom in just a little bit more. Actually, you know what? Let me go back because there it is. It was a little closer with my head in the screen. You can see Friday the 13th, valid for this afternoon. We actually have a number of ensemble members showing anywhere between a sloppy thousand some odd millibar tropical storm to even a more organized, robust feature taking aim on southern Texas. Now, regardless of the development, that's the key here. We're still a bit wishy-washy, and it all is due to the subtropical ridging that's centered over the Atlantic, extending further westward across Florida into the eastern periphery of the Gulf, driving up our trade winds. Our vertical wind shear is immense. That's why everything has been bullied into the eastern Pacific up to this point. Now, our models are noticing that shortwave trough, that upper low that I showed you on the infrared, it's disrupting the pattern a little bit. It's acting like a magnet for features down near Central America in the Eastern Pacific, very reminiscent of what we saw with a few different entities last season. Very, very similar pattern. And to tell you the truth, looking at the ensembles, we may have something try to begin to form and try to rotate down there right around the exact same date as Tropical Storm Alberto did last hurricane season. So I thought that was very interesting. You switch over to the GEFS ensembles and it's the same general thinking in the Bay of Campeche sliding on up and again whether or not this organizes we're still in a holding pattern. I truthfully believe the ball is in National Hurricane Center's court. I think if this is going to be the attempt, this is the attempt. And then I'll show you something else into the video here momentarily that I'm also interested to see in some of our latest long-range updates, but we'll get to that. So all in all, our ensembles and our computer models are singing the same tune. You come on over to the Canadian ensembles. I'll change the screen, bring it down a little bit, and you notice in that same spot, June 18th to June 19th, we have pretty good agreement something could very well cross over from the eastern Pacific and lift up, scrape the coast of eastern Mexico, southern portions of Texas, maybe even dip as far to the right as Louisiana, but I'm not confident in, on, on that at all. So Louisiana, I wouldn't be sweating this. And if you did, all you're going to see from this is an increase in your showers and thunderstorms and maybe some rough coastal conditions if this were to stay over open water long enough. That was what I wanted to emphasize is for my Texas folks out there, if you're watching, you're going to see your rain chances go up. The 
Noah Blend, for example, thinks is you could get around two to four inches if this feature rolls on up in that general direction, regardless of if it's organized enough to be classified as a named storm. We're going to be watching it for those rainfall totals and some elevated winds as well. I've also been keeping tabs on this because I know last hurricane season we really had a lot of emphasis on the dust, the dust, the dust. Well, the dust is a non-issue. You look at the Bay of Campeche, we have a very, very shallow layer of Saharan air out there. So it's really not going to do very much to disrupt the environment. We've got plenty of moisture to go around, so I'm not concerned. And then another date and time that I'm pinpointing is closer to my military anniversary of the 26th. If you notice, you get to the end of the loop and the Saharan air layer is almost almost non-existent. There's really nothing out there. Those little wispy bands there you see on the model, not going to do very much to our environment at all. Plenty of moisture. So I think the dust, the Saharan air is really going to be a non-issue for the rest of June altogether. And with that being said, I'm going to bring us over to our latest velocity anomaly valid for yesterday. It populated today. This is a far more progressive look for my folks watching. If you notice, I'll get myself out of the screen so I can draw for you. We're coming out of the end. We're at the tail end of our most excited MJO phase. You can see it is expected to start to really diminish over the next three, four, maybe five days, and we will officially be on the back side of it. Then we have a Kelvin wave that's going to propagate through the pattern, opening up maybe a small window of opportunity for some tropical energy out there to maybe try to do something. That's a big maybe. Not seeing much on that just yet, but I'm looking at the Hovmaller specifically to pinpoint these dates, just like we more or less nailed Friday of the 13th and shortly thereafter then initially the computer model the control of the ensemble european was pinpointing we would have just unfavorable conditions a whole suppressed phase from pretty much a large majority of july you can see that has changed we're now seeing a kelvin wave weak little impulse somewhere in the pattern that's going to be a non-issue i'm really not expecting any stimulation from that but then we have this coming through just around the fourth of july all the way towards the back end of july now if this trends and i want to emphasize that i'm going to pull myself back up again if this remains consistent and we do see more progression with these impulses near the tropics around the equatorial regions of the globe, starting in the Indian Ocean, working its way all the way to our neck of the woods, the East Pack, the Caribbean thereafter. I'm not saying we're going to be active, but this is a far more favorable upper air look. Naturally, you go this far on time, and it's a question of what the wind shear looks like, what our trade winds look like, what the North Atlantic oscillation looks like. If we're still going to be under a blocking pattern, will this all spill? over into the eastern pacific will we have a lot of the saharan air layer everywhere or just simply dry air well though you know i can go on endless intraseasonal parameters but you all get the picture in terms of checking off our checklist for where it is we need to be paying attention as we go further through time this is a far more conducive look to get anywhere between one to three if not maybe even more than that but i'm erring more so on the side of caution one to three named storms between now and towards the back side of july you come over here and you can see it even better when you look from the top down this is where we are currently you can see the excited phase of the mjo is just about over you fast forward to day 10 and we end up in that suppressed phase i want to emphasize you can still get some action in a suppressed phase this doesn't shut us down entirely okay i really want you to remember that it is a little bit more difficult you have to rely on the general thermodynamics of your atmosphere the lift the moisture what your trigger is if it's a tropical wave if it's an upper low a cold front you all know that and then after that you go to day 15 look at that there's that kelvin wave between the 22nd and the 27th of june once again coming across our basin then it rapidly moves downstream and then you go forward into time into July and look at all that rising motion. This could possibly be another round of MJO action coming across. And this time it's very, very spread out which means we could see a bit more favoring on the Atlantic side. And I know for the lack of better terms, spread out is not the precise way to describe it. But if you notice, we're not focusing or honing in on a standing wave feature in either basin. This one looks to be a little less enhanced, which could work in our favor. That's neither here nor there. We'll have to wait and see. 
I also have the long range CFS pulled up so you all can take a look. Let me clear my face out of the screen so you all can shake, kind of just monitor with me, walk through the loop, looking at the tropics, both from the ITCZ out through the Caribbean, and I'll step you through time. So if you notice, there's that one feature down there in the Gulf, right there. You can see it lifting up from Central America, the Yucatan. And reminder, CFS, you don't really want to use it to track individual features, but I do find it interesting that this model even carries that area of low pressure into the Western Gulf. Then you get another round of energy to propagate through. This one kind of forms up and then meanders back into the Eastern Pacific right around that June 26 time frame. And then you fast forward even further from there into the early periphery of July. Notice we get some excited tropical waves out there as we get ready to enter that more favorable window, once again, indicated by the European control model. And you can see that there are individual perturbations out there. There's one around in through here, one through there, one through there, one through there in the MDR. So it's going to be very interesting to see. And with that robust high pressure steering everything towards the west, we're definitely going to see something. And we'll have to keep a close eye out on what it is that something looks like down the road. And with that being said, that'll wrap up our Friday the 13th edition of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you so much if you've watched to the end. I sincerely appreciate it. Lots of information very rapidly accelerated through. I hope that it was digestible for you. You can chew on it through the weekend. If we continue to see stuff kind of trend in the direction that we're going and the signals there we're starting to see ensembles and operational models picking up on this feature if national hurricane center does pull the trigger by maybe sunday if not monday i will be back here before the weekend is out with another update we may even stream it we may even stream it and just talk about it together as a community but thank you all so much for taking the time out of your friday afternoon and or evening whenever it is you're watching this or even after the fact to join me here in the weather center you all have been such a supreme community and it's great to have you all in my corner as we rock into possibly the opening act of the 2025 hurricane season we shall see we've been looking at these dates for a while now and so far we've been on it we've been on it so now we'll see if the atlantic will follow through and again the ball is in national hurricane center's corner if they're going to give us that tropical weather outlook the infamous blip as we like to say here in the weather center Please drop me a comment in the comment section down below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Let me know you're watching from or if you just want to say hello and strike up some conversation over the weekend. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there coming up this Sunday. Enjoy it with your family, your loved ones. I hope the weather is great in your neck of the woods. And until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.